King of the Zombies from 1941 was a very silly and enjoyable zombie movie starring Dick Purcell, Joan Woodbury, and Manton Moreland. But truth be told, Manton Moreland was really the star of this one. I'll give a summary of the film and then offer some closing thoughts. Well, the film opens up. There's a plane up in the air. It's apparently lost somewhere between Cuba and Puerto Rico. Now, in the plane, uh, the pilot, Mac McCarthy, played by Dick Purcell, he actually used to play Captain America in the old original serials. And with him is passenger Bill Summers, played by John Archer, who I caught recently in the film Bowery at Midnight, as well as Jeff Jackson, played by Manton Moreland. Very funny actor. I caught him recently in Tarzan's New York Adventure. And they make an emergency landing on a mysterious island. Well, the guys gather together, apparently no worse for wear, and they head toward a mysterious old house. Now, it's here that they meet this creepy character, Dr. Sangri. He's played by actor Henry Victor. He kind of approaches them with a candle with lots of eerie lighting. Now, learning of their situation, he offers them a drink and a place to stay for the night. Now, Jeff has to head off to his own room, though, as a servant's quarters down in the basement. While he's here, he meets lovely maid Samantha, played by Marguerite Witten, and also sees an older woman cooking some mysterious potion or something in a cauldron. This is the character Tahama, played by actress Madame Saltawan. Hope I said that right. Samantha explains how zombies are all over the place. And all you have to do is clap your hands, and they comes a running. Who is they? Who is they? Zombies. Wow! What kept you so long? Wow! Well, Jeff runs off and tells Bill all about the zombies, but of course they don't seem to believe him. Even Dr. Sangre shows up and tells him, now ah, there's no zombies here. They go to the kitchen together and Samantha and Tahama, they're both there and they deny any of this zombie business. But once the others leave and they're there alone with Jeff, Samantha reveals that yes, there are zombies, but they have to be kind of secret about it. And what Dr. Sangre's schemes are with them is a Big mystery. Well, Dr. Sangri, meanwhile, introduces Mac and Bill to his wife, played by Patricia Stacy, who appears to be in a trance-like state. Dr. Sangri explains it as just some sort of an unknown state, almost like a zombie, where she just walks around with a blank expression. Maybe it's a kind of jungle fever or something, he explains. Then they meet Barbara Winslow, who's played by actress Joan Woodbury, who seems a little nervous around these strangers. She's apparently a niece of the doctor, and he explains that they are actually Austrian refugees, and they can't leave the island because they don't have passports. But it all sounds a little bit fishy. Now, Bill explains that an American, Admiral Wainwright, had a plane that apparently disappeared somewhere in their same location. And Dr. Sangri seems surprised to hear about this, but offers to have the local natives help look for him. Now, Mac goes and looks at some of the doctor's things, you know, eerie masks and strange things like that, which Dr. Sangri explains he's collected on his journeys. One is an ancient mask from Ireland used for transmigration in order to take over the body of the living. Hmm. Well, they all get summoned to dinner. And at this point, Jeff is down in the kitchen. He's washing dishes when apparently since it's late, the crew all leave abruptly for the night and leave him all alone at the witching hour. He lights a bunch of candles and tries to get some sleep down there, 
but the candles seem to just magically blow out by themselves right as some zombies arrive. Don't come close to me. I ain't no film anymore. Well, he takes off running and he goes and tells Bill all about the zombies. But Dr. Sangri is there to tell him that, hey, no, there's no zombies. He's acting crazy. And Bill is cool with Jeff just staying with them in their room for the night. And both he and Jeff both seem to think there's something weird going on. And a little bit later that night, Jeff wakes up, believing he saw a woman who seemed to come in through a wall. He wakes up Bill and Mac, and at first they don't believe it, but Later they do, when they find a mysterious earring that has just appeared. So they go, and they grab some candles, and they're creeping around downstairs. You know, Scooby-Doo style, where they split up to look around. Mac and Jeff creep down to the basement, and meanwhile, Bill discovers Barbara, who is kind of sneaking into a library quietly. She's reading a book on hypnotism. Now, Barbara says she's reading this to help her aunt, who has been in this trance state ever since arriving at the island. Bill tells her that he thinks that this Dr. Sangre might be hiding a radio somewhere on this island, because apparently there's no electricity or anything. Everything's kind of lit up by candles. Now, meanwhile, Jeff and Mac continue to look around when a zombie suddenly grabs Jeff. Mac gets clobbered in this, but Bill arrives just in time. And soon, all of the guys, yeah, they believe something definitely weird is going on here. And the next day, they plan to go out and check on the plane. Yeah, you know, try to get off the island. Mac and Bill, they head to the plane and discover a freshly dug grave in the cemetery. And they also find that the instruments have been removed from the plane, such as the radio. But who did it? Hmm. They head back to the house, and Mac goes looking for a generator. Well, we cut over to Dr. Sangri, who's sneaking around and he opens up a passage behind a bookshelf and takes him to a hidden room and it's here we finally see admiral wainwright played by actor guy usher and he's being held hostage in the cellar he really looks out of it completely and tahama is there doing her voodoo chants trying to get him to talk and the doctor then calls some germans on the radio and uh, okay it's all starting to come together here now, meanwhile, Jeff is down enjoying some pie with Samantha. She explains that her old man had died a while ago, but he still shows up from time to time in zombie form, much to Jeff's alarm. Bill arrives, he's unable to find Mac, and they go out to look for him. Now, this Dr. Sangre, meanwhile, captures Jeff and manages to turn him into a zombie. Well, sort of, with hypnotism. It's really silly, but... I like it. I am dead. Um, I is. Repeat. I am dead. I am dead. I am dead. I have returned to the land of the living. I am a zombie. 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 Get over there where you belong. Yes, sir. Move over, boys. I'm one of the gang now. So while Bill is searching for Mac, he finds Barbara, and it looks like she's using some sort of hypnotism on her aunt. But no, she tells him she's actually just trying to restore her memory. Meanwhile... Mac appears to be seriously wounded somehow, and Dr. Sangre brings in a doctor to examine him, who reveals that he's been dead for hours. Now, Jeff, meanwhile, is walking around like a zombie, and he marches into the kitchen with the other zombies. Company, oh, one, two, yeah. gangway for kid zombie. What you doing in that lineup? Don't bother me, woman. Can't you see ours a has-been? A zombie? Nothing else but. And don't ask me my name, because I don't know. I don't know nothing. You ain't no zombie. Zombies can't talk. Can I help it because I'm loquacious? How'd you get this way? I ain't telling nothing. All I know is that I joined the club. 
And as a member, I has privileges. What privileges? Privileges to get fed. That ain't no new development with you. Woman, where's my food? There it is. Help yourself. Comedy, come and get it. Samantha feeds him a meal with lots of salt because apparently, you know, if you're a zombie, you can't eat salt because it like dries you up and stuff. But he turns out fine. So he kind of snaps out of his zombie state and leaves and runs into Bill to get an update on what's going on. So they hear a scream that sounds like Barbara and they also hear some drums. Bill asks, what does that sound like? And Jeff is, I don't know, but it ain't Gene Krupa. I <laughs> love it. It's great. So they find this big zombie ceremony. It's going on. It almost looks like something from like a universal classic monster film. I like the, the set and the costumes and the sound. It actually looks pretty cool here. So there's the Admiral there and Barbara and both are prisoners. As Dr. Sangri dons his spooky mind control mask and the zombies are all there as well. And Mac is now apparently a zombie along with them. Well, what will Bill and Jeff do? Can they save their friend or is it too late? Well, you have to watch the exciting ending for yourself to find out. So some closing thoughts. The King of Zombies was an entertaining and silly zombie film from 1941. It was produced by Monogram Pictures and directed by Gene Yarbrough, who is a director I've seen other films by. He's done many shows and films. I reviewed films like The Creeper and She-Wolf of London that he directed. Now, in researching this film, I was actually looking at the zombie encyclopedia and they mentioned that this was monogram's answer to RKO's film from the previous year, the ghost breakers. And I like the summary of this film. They call it a quote, utterly absurd and delightful thriller featuring a veritable smorgasbord of alternative consciousness, hypnotism, zombification, and transmigration of souls. <laughs> I guess that summarizes it well. And honestly, the zombies in the film aren't necessarily all that scary at all. And in fact, all they seem to do is just walk around and look creepy. I never really hurt anyone. I was reading about the film on TCM and it mentioned that Bela Lugosi was initially considered for this role of the Dr. Sangri. And that would have been cool. And they also later wanted to get Peter Lorre into the cast. Again, that would have been pretty cool. But, you know, I actually like seeing this actor, Henry Victor. I haven't actually seen him before. And as an actor, he has this tall, menacing presence, and he always just happens to show up at key moments through the film. And, you know, I thought he was great here. You know, it's interesting to think, you know, what would have been like if Bela Lugosi had been in it? But, you know, I like it how it was. It's interesting, too, that this film was apparently nominated for an Academy Award for scoring of a dramatic picture. It's interesting, you know, I enjoyed the menacing drums you'd hear through the film, but I honestly don't remember much of the score itself as standing out. But yeah, those drums were kind of creepy. You knew that the zombies were on their way. And while I enjoyed seeing Dick Purcell and John Archer as the two heroic leads here, I mean, they both did a fine job. Let's be honest, you watch this film and it's really Manton Moreland who is the star of this film. He is absolutely hilarious with his comedic timing, his crazy expressions, and his silly zingers. You know, like when he's turned into a zombie and he says, move over boys, I'm one of the gang now. <laughs> I've only seen him briefly before in Tarzan's New York Adventure. And after seeing that and seeing him in this film, I'd really love to see more of his films. I think he's been in a bunch of Charlie Chan films as well. So I'm adding those to my list. According to his bio, when he was in the film, The Strange Case of Dr. X in 1942, it was here that he was noticed by the Three Stooges member, Shemp Howard, who actually suggested to his brother, Mo, that Moreland would have been a perfect replacement stooge if there was ever a need. Now, Moreland would go on to star in those Charlie Chan films. I think there were like 15 of them. The need did arrive for a replacement stooge later on in 1955. Uh, Shemp Howard had died of a sudden heart attack and Mo Howard supposedly offered Moreland a chance to join in as the new third stooge. Now Moreland was interested, but I guess Columbia Pictures had insisted on comedian Joe Besser instead, who was already under contract and he joined in 1956. I just mentioned all this because it's a very interesting 
a what if to consider, you know, if he had become one of the Stooges. And it's a shame that Moreland didn't get the shot. His bio is actually very interesting, including his past years in vaudeville as a comedian and over 300 films in the industry. You know, I may actually do a bio of him in the future, like I did with Edmund O'Brien. It's just a great actor. In any case, let me try to wrap up the review. A quick final note, there was apparently a sequel to this film, Revenge of the Zombies from 1943. And that also features Manton Moreland. So I've definitely got that on my list to check out. And again, thanks to everyone who has suggested films for this channel. Yes, I log all of them. I put a note about who suggested it. And I do try to get to them all, but because I'm all over the place with what I watch and what I review, it might be a while, but you know, I hope to get to them all eventually. And that's King of the Zombies from 1941. It was a very funny, very silly zombie movie. It's not very long. I believe it's in the public domain because there are tons of copies of this all over YouTube. And again, watch it for Manton Moreland. He is just amazing in this film. Very funny, very talented actor. It's a great film. It's worth checking out.